Hey, this is my favorite type of videos to make on the channel. It's uh, Q&A, where I get to take your video questions and I'll answer them. Now, this particular episode is not the best. I know, not the best way to start our video, but there's a reason for that. And I wanna see if you figure out why this particular video is not the best Q&A ever. I'll tell you at the end. But for now, let's see question number one. Hi Dave, um, I'm Andy from Australia. Been trying to write a song for maybe the last year. I don't think I'll have any trouble trying to write a tune, but how would you go about trying to write a song in the words if you don't have much to say? You know, it's very difficult for me to think of words to put together um, without sounding like you know uh, somebody that's done it before just thought you might like to enlighten us how you might do that. Cheers, Andy. Hey, Andy, I love the background. I, one, that's on my bucket list to visit Australia. My sister lives over there. I really need to go sometime. First of all, that's why I love instrumental music so much. I'm not very good with words either. But I do have a few suggestions. Um, my suggestion would be to not overthink it, first of all. And instead of thinking of the, the words themselves, I would maybe think of the rhythm first. So let's say you have a song, I'm gonna make something super simple. Let's say you have a... And it just kind of loops around. I would um, kind of sing a melody without any words first and uh, think of the once you have something that kind of flows think of the rhythm of it so it could be something like na 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 for example you've got something cool you like na 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 then take that melodic line you sang and count the syllables one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, seven, oh, sorry, nine syllables. So you've got your, your syllables. Uh, that's the first thing. You're going to use that to write your lyrics. So you've got a, a kind of a rhythm thing, almost like poetry, but guided poetry, where you have the exercise of writing a poem with nine uh, syllable verses, for example. And then as you sing, maybe you will have certain sounds that seem to resonate a little bit better with the, the chord progression. Na, 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 ya, de, ya, da, de. Do you like that A sound or, or ah, ah? I like ah. Or kind of like O2. Oh Just try to find some sounds that work for you that are more pleasant. That's another clue as to what to write. So you can go that route. Instead of thinking of themes, you're thinking of sounds and rhythm. So that's what I would do if I'm completely stuck. But that being said, that's probably why I love instrumental music so much. Uh, pretty much all I write is instrumental at this point. I hope it helps. Thanks, mate. <laughs> okay, next question. My question is about singing and playing guitar at the same time. I'm uh, the only guitar player in a three piece. And sometimes when we're, we're trying to cover a song, uh, depending on the song, of course, but um, the more complicated the song is. So at the moment we're looking at uh, Stop by Joe Bonamassa. Um, and my technique so far for, for dealing with this would be to play the, the song until I, I know it really well, and then to sing the song until I know it really well and put the two together. But in some cases, um, I still find that mentally I'm, I'm find it challenging to maybe put the um, emotion into the guitar part or concentrate on the vocal um, at the same time. So um, yeah, if you've got any tips on on and above, just practice, practice, which is a, a, an obvious one. But if, you, if you've got some techniques that you use, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, that's a great question. It's such a good song too. 
my, the first thing that came to mind as you were asking the question is that it seems like you're really separating both things, the playing and the vocals. You're trying to really nail the song well and then adding the vocals on it. I think that's the first mistake because you're approaching this as two things and you're kind of taking the vocal part as a secondary thing, not as important as the playing part, which I get that we do that as guitar players, but I think that's a mistake as a member of the band because it's always going to be heard as something that you added on top of the foundation and it should really be both together. So what I would suggest is it takes a little bit more time, but once you're familiar, once you're familiar with the song, uh, play it through and sing over it and then really isolate all the sections that are a little complicated. So for example, we got something like this. At some point where he's playing a B minor. I haven't learned this song, but just a first listen is doing something like that, right? I would just isolate that and first sing of what he's singing uh, over this. So, as you cross the street, as you cross the street. So I need to learn the parts, but that's kind of the idea. I loop a section with both elements together because what you're hearing in the song is not just a guitar with a voice on top. It's this thing, guitar plus voice, that is really uh, glued together. So that'll be my tip. I hope it helps. Our next question is from Pete. David, Pete calling in. Was interested very much in the harmonic major and harmonic minor and melodic modes, uh, minor modes. We did enjoy your exploring the modes with Nick Kelly that you just posted and would be very interested in learning more about the harmonic major, harmonic minor, and melodic modes. Uh, if you could touch on that, uh, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, Pete, thanks so much. I'm going to link to that uh, workshop in the description for those of you who haven't seen it. Basically, whenever you're approaching a new scale or a new mode, uh, really, the structure of approach, in my opinion, should stay the same. It, it's really going to help you. First things, stick to one mode only or one scale only. So let's take the harmonic minor, for example. It's something you want to explore. You can do a quick search online and figure out the blueprint of that scale or mode. The intervals that make what that scale is, that differentiates that particular scale from anything else. That's the only thing you need. So harmonic minor, for example, would be one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, seven. Once you have that, and yes, it does require an understanding of the intervals, but I'll touch on that in just a second. Once you have that, you can start mapping it out on your fretboard and really do the work. I would not suggest uh, Googling positions of harmonic minor. I wouldn't do that. I would take a blank canvas and map out all the, the intervals on that blank fretboard. Now I use a software called Neck Diagram, which is great because you can do that um, in the click of a mouse. Let me show you how it works. Now you can do this on paper too, but the software allows you to right click and do a scale generator. Again, this is called Neck Diagrams. I'll also leave the link in the description if you'd like to check it out. Uh, harmonic minor is the scale we're going to use. Select a root, we'll do A for example for the root. And we're going to do this um, throughout the whole fretboard here and click finish and that's what we get. Okay. The next thing is really an exploration thing. And I really recommend that you do this instead of trying to find a book that lists all the chords, the possible chords of harmonic minor, don't do that. Instead, because we're in A, we can play a constant A on that fifth string. And then uh, just randomly add some notes to that. Those will be possible chords that would work over the harmonic minor scale. So for example, let's pick uh, these three there on the, the fourth, third, and second string. This right here is the ninth fret, so that means I can play my open string for A on the fifth string, and then nine, nine, nine. Okay, this means that these notes together would work with an A harmonic minor. So let's try that. I'm gonna play my chord and play A harmonic minor. Interesting, right? And then try another chord. Maybe we'll pick 
uh, this, this, and this. So this right here, that's the seventh fret, and then seven and six. It's the second chord that will work over our A harmonic minor. And I could blend it with the first chord. This will give you an ear for the harmonic minor scale, and you keep exploring like this. And this is a very different approach than memorizing all the different patterns. We didn't even start with a pattern, we started with everything. The patterns, they're fine, they're gonna get you started, but they also are going to get you locked into that pattern, and it's hard to escape that. This approach is what um, Alan Holdsworth would do. If you, I don't know if you've, if you're not familiar with them, check them out. But um, he has, there are some samples of some of his um, early, uh, there was a VHS tape where he was explaining modes and it's very different. He just sees the whole fretboard and extracts chords from them without thinking of intervals or anything like that. He just goes by seeing the whole fretboard and those are the options. When I see scales, I see them, the whole guitar neck like that. So it's just up to me to, um, to uh, juggle the notes around and improvise and make melodies out of them. Give that a try. And for those of you who are watching this and are curious about that workshop that Pete mentioned, the link's in the description. All right, next question. By the way, are you figuring out what's wrong with this video? Not yet? Answer in just a few minutes. Okay, let's take a look at the next question. Hey David, Rick here. Wanted to ask you your recommendation on how much time should you put on yourself when learning a new song or a new piece of music. Is it important to put a time limit on, on yourself, like a couple of days a week to learn something before moving on to another project? Or could you also work on a couple of things back and forth over a few days, work on a couple of songs? Thank you so much for this opportunity, thanks. That's a really good question. I think it depends um, on what you're doing. If, you, if we're talking about you've got a specific assignment, a gig or something like that, then uh, this advice does not apply. But if we're just talking about musical development and learning how to be a better musician, uh, my to-go rule would be this. Once you get bored with something, move on to something else. Because it should be fun. And the cool thing with music, as opposed to other subjects like learning a language or maths or things like that is that those topics require a real progression. Music doesn't work like that, unfortunately, because it makes it a lot harder to teach. But also fortunately, because that means that whatever you're working on, you're still learning as long as you keep curiosity involved. Be curious about whatever you're doing. So if you're learning a song instead of a scale or improvising, Ask yourself questions. If something piques your curiosity, then dig deep into that thing. I don't know, let's say that you're learning a song. Um, I don't, well, here's what comes to mind. Okay, uh, Sweet Home Alabama. You're learning that, and then at some point you're, you're asking yourself, well, why do I like this so much? What makes this so interesting? Curiosity is triggered. Ask yourself that question. Are there any other songs that you like. Well, maybe, maybe you also like this a lot. Um, I made it up. I don't know what that is. But uh, once you figure those things out, you can start exploring. Are there anything similar between these two? Well, the first one was something like this. Notice that this this note right here is recurring. It's a recurring note between this. That note stays the same, but the meaning of that note changes. Just like the other riff that I was playing that I just made up. This stays the same. The bass changes, which means that the meaning of those notes changes. Huh. What makes the meaning of those note changes? And could it be that you like these two pieces because you kind of like that. You like hearing a piece where uh, the note or the note change meaning.
Maybe. So that will lead you to a path path of intervals. All that to say that、uh, when do you stop learning a song? Well, when you're no longer curious about it, or when your interest is lost. Move on to something else. It's not going to be lost.、Um, I hope that answered your question. All right, we have one more, and then I will tell you why this video really sucks. Kind of. <laughs> All right, let's take a look at the next question. Hi, David. My question is: What is your experience from gigging, playing live?、Uh, do you do coffee houses, local bars, and what is your experience from people playing music live without mu-、uh, without words and lyrics? By the way, the reason this video is not a great video is not because of those questions.、It's、something else. All right, thanks for asking this one. That's a good one. My experience with gigging is an older experience. I used to do all of that stuff. I used to play in bands, do coffee shops, bars,、uh, private events, and all that stuff. And I enjoyed it, but not as much as I enjoy playing my guitar here in my room. I'd be completely content writing music for the rest of my life that nobody would ever hear, as opposed to playing gigs. I would rather just write music on my own. Nobody hears it. And I, I feel that I'm kind of an oddball ball because most of my friends, guitar players, love gigging. They live for the gig. They live for the sharing experience. I hope it doesn't mean that I'm selfish. I, I don't think so. I just think that it means that I, I love music for,、uh, what it does to my soul. I guess I, I don't know. It's hard to tell. But I will tell you that.、Um, My, I, I did. One of the reasons I didn't really like gigging that much is that because is that there's a lot of setup time. There's a lot of waiting around, and playing the actual gig never sounded as good, and it was never as enjoyable as、uh, me sitting in my room and really digging deep and enjoying、uh, that aspect. So, part of it is also probably because of the venues themselves. Maybe there weren't great venues to play with.、Um, I don't know, man. That's my experience.、Uh, will I ever get back to it?、Um, hopefully not, because it would mean that I have to to feed my family. But I would do it in a heartbeat. But it's not my favorite thing to do. <laughs>、um, that said, I, I like people. I, I like、uh, hanging out with people. I just don't really like playing in public. <sighs> I am such a non-ball. All right. Thanks so much for asking. Thank you, everyone, who who asked those questions. Now, why did this video?、Um, why wasn't it that good? Well, because it was missing your question, and that would make an awesome video. I would love to hear your questions, your video questions. And there's only one way to do that, and it's through the Backstage app. That's my community. And within this community, you can post your video questions, and they will be featured on the channel in a future episode. Not only that, but you can also see behind the scenes of what's going on here, and it's completely free. And there are some exclusive perks as well. It really is free. It's a safe community of guitar players to ask questions and grow together. So join me on the app. You can do that by clicking right here. And if you do it today. You still have time to submit your video questions for the next episode, which will be sometime in a few weeks. So, can't wait to hear from you here. I'll meet you in the app. Thanks to everyone who participated today. See you next time.